Hallelujah. I got a question for you. <laughs> how many of you, as, little, as a little child, how many of you ever felt like running away from home? Anybody? <laughs> I guess quite a few. Anybody ever packed their bags and actually took off? <laughs> Hallelujah. I got another question for you. How many of you, as a grown-up, ever wanted to run away from home? <laughs> oh, goodness. I can remember when I was a young mom, just a few years ago, Jeremy was our firstborn, and he was three and a half years old when Mandy was born. And Jeremy was always a great sleeper. I mean, he... You could just put that little boy, in, you know, you take him in the car, go around the block. He'd take morning naps for hours. He'd take afternoon naps for hours. He was sleeping all night at one month old. I mean, that's the mother's dream. <laughs> then comes along my precious darling little girl <laughs> who never wanted to take a nap. She didn't want to sleep. She was too busy to do all of that kind of stuff. And, you know... Uh, during the labor and all, my blood pressure had gotten really high, and so they had put me on blood pressure medicine. And it was one that just made me so groggy. I mean, try, try to picture yourself functioning through the day as a mother with a three-and-a-half-year-old, a new baby. Your mind is like, ooh, you're in la-la land because this stuff they have you on is just, you know. And... and you can't get the youngest one to sleep. <laughs> I can remember it would take me longer to get her to sleep than actually her nap would be. I might go 30 minutes or so. I danced that child around the room. <laughs> I did everything possible to try to get her to take a nap. But you know, she just didn't need that much sleep, I guess. And I guess without realizing it, I probably spent a lot of time and so, you know, I think Jeremy, he, he was three and a half years old, a little jealous, not kind of sure what's going on with this new <laughs> little person in our life. And so he was kind of, you know, I don't know, a little discontent at times, I guess. And then you got to keep up with everything. You know, you got the groceries, you got the laundry, you got everything else that comes. <laughs> I see some of you relating. <laughs> You know, if you think being a mom, guys, if you think staying at home is easy, ask the mothers. <laughs> we will tell you it is way past the full-time job. <laughs> and we always need help. But um, it, it was just, it was a challenge. And, you know, I could really remember at some times just thinking, I'd like to run away from home. <laughs> Where would I have gone, really, huh? Think about it. But God is so good. I tell you, I had been born again several years, so I did. Can I say something? Sure, you're the boss. <laughs> just every once in a while, I'd come home, and you'd just say, I'm going to the mall. Right, right. I mean, who, who wouldn't want to run to the mall <laughs> and get a break? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And so anyway, I knew enough that I loved my children. I mean, you love your children. But I wasn't liking them a whole lot. <laughs> it gets to where, you know, it's a lot of work, and it was really hard, and my mind was not functioning good. And so I was having a hard time, and I'll, I'll tell you, I had developed a pretty bad attitude. <laughs> I was like, I need a break. But I had been familiar with, I had started going to prayer meetings. And, um, you know, prayer <laughs> will do wonders for you. We paid babysitters so we could go to prayer meetings. You know, you know, people get so busy today, and I can't do this, and I can't. They need it desperately, but they ain't got the time, and the, they can't leave their kids. Yeah, let me tell you, sometimes... You just need to get away and pray. And sometimes you need people to help you because when you are in such a tizzy, it's hard sometimes to calm yourself down and get 
into that presence of God, get into that prayer. But I had been at prayer meetings long enough to know you got answers when you went there. <laughs> God answered your prayer. So I went to this prayer meeting, and I just said, I need a new heart. I need a new attitude. I am a mess. <laughs> Would you pray for me? And you know, but I believed when they prayed for me, something was going to happen. See, you have to go in faith. But I had faith that if they just prayed for me, I would be okay. And so they did. They prayed for me. And I do not lie when I tell you the very next day when I got up, my children had changed. <laughs> not. My kids didn't change, but I'm telling you, God did a work in my heart. I asked for a new heart, and I asked for a new attitude. And you know what? I woke up, and I had a new attitude. And all of a sudden, my little darlings were just <laughs> so wonderful. We could make games to pick up the house. We could make games to get the food down. <laughs> we began to have a good time. And I think they liked me a lot better. <laughs> <laughs> the message, the title of my message today is Finding Your Happy Place. I know a while back they had that commercial, you know, go to the casino, find <laughs> your happy place. I dare to say <laughs> that would not be my happy place. Amen. But there is a place in God that you can be happy in it. And it's going to involve the Word of God, and it's going to involve trusting in the Word of God. A lot of people say, oh, I know what that says. I know the Word. Mm. Are you living it? If you know it, is it a part of you? Are you doing what it says to do? You know, we ha all have the choices. We can, we can read it and just pssst, go over the top of our head, or we can take it in and live by it. And you've got to work the Word. You know, you've got to build some faith muscles. You have to let God work in you. He is good. And I'll tell you, trust is a must. Would everybody just say that? Trust is a must. Amen. And I'm going to read a few scriptures on trust for you right now. Psalms 34 verse 8 says, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. How blessed or how happy is the man who trusts in him. Those who fear him shall have no want. Those that seek the Lord shall not be in want of any good thing. Hallelujah. Psalms 37 verse 3 says, Trust in the Lord and do good. Delight in him and he will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your ways to the Lord. Give it to the Lord. Give it to the Lord. Amen. Give it to the Lord. What happens so many times is we give it to the Lord and we take it back. We give it to the Lord and we take it back. But you know, when we can give it to him, put it in his hands, trust that he is going to work out in your situation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Psalms 28, verse 7 says, The Lord is my strength and my shield. If you are feeling tired and weary and unguarded, go to the Lord. He will strengthen you. He will be your shield. He says, My heart trusts in him, and I am helped. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My heart trusts in him. Sometimes you just have to, you have to locate your heart. Amen? Sometimes we, we mix up our heart with our head, what's coming out of our head, our thoughts, our wills, our emotions. But then there's your heart. And in your heart is where you hide away the word of God. And if you go to that word, 
He's going to strength you, he, strengthen you. He's going to help you. Um, Psalms 118, verses 6 through 9. The Lord is for me. I will not fear. What can man do to me? Amen. The Lord is for me among those who help me. Therefore, I shall look with satisfaction on those who hate me. It is better to take refuge or trust in the Lord than to trust in princes. Amen. Psalms 85, 11, For the Lord God is a sun and shield. He gives grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. O Lord of hosts, how blessed or happy is the man who trusts in the Lord. And one more, Psalms 91, 1. He who dwells in the shadow of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. And I will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. You know, God can be trusted. And yet so many times we find ourselves in the middle of situations and you really want to panic <laughs> because it's not looking so good. And yet we have to remember that we have to put our trust in God. We have to be willing to hear the word. You've got to be where the word is being spoken. Amen? First of all, you have to have your own prayer time where you speak the word. The Bible says meditate day and night. That means speak it out, mutter it, talk about it. Why? Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. Well, that's why it's good to speak. Speak, you want, God says to meditate, take the word, don't just read it, more than just your eyes seeing it, speak it out of your mouth, speak it because then you'll hear it, and speak it, and, and take it in, and read, study, how many of you have a study time in the word, study, and meditate on that word. Get it on the inside of you. And then believe that God is good. And that his word is good. Everything he says is for our good. God is not looking at a way to trip us up. <laughs> the devil is. But God, God is looking to, for our good. And so we have to believe and trust in his word. You know when you don't trust somebody... Are you going to take them at their word? If you, if you don't have trust in a person and they come and tell you something, it might be something you really need to hear or do, but if you don't trust them, you won't have faith to follow that person. But you know, God's word, is, it's true. It can be trusted without faith. Can't please God. God's looking for people who trust his word. Take him at his word. Paul said in Acts chapter 26, verse 2, he said, I think myself happy. <laughs> I love that scripture. And you're going to have to think yourself happy too. Amen. How many of you ever have that, what they call that stinking thinking going on through your head? I'm just going to ask that again, and I want you all to be honest. How many of you ever have stinking thinking? <laughs> Come on, help me here. <laughs> I know I'm not the only one, praise God. Because there's a real devil, and he goes around setting people up to get upset. Because if you get upset, then you're not happy. You're not happy when you're upset. It's hard to be upset and be happy. <laughs> Let me put it that way. <laughs> and so he's always coming around with different situations in our life to get us upset. He just wants to press your button. And over the years, he knows exactly where your buttons are. <laughs> <Amen>. <laughs> Hallelujah. And he comes to steal, to kill, destroy. Now, I'm not going to say anything new today, amen, but I'm going to say things we all need to hear again and again and again. And so he comes to steal that word, because if he can steal that word, 
He'll steal your joy. If he steals your joy, he steals your strength. Once you have no strength, let me tell you, you are dinner for him. You will be his dinner, his lunch, his everything. And so the Bible tells us in 1 Peter chapter 7, 1 Peter 5, excuse me, uh, verse 7. Casting, casting. It didn't say half cast. It says casting. You notice that word? It's a, it's a now word. <laughs> it's a today, tomorrow, <laughs> next day. It says casting all your cares upon him. For he cares for you. He cares. God cares for us. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. But then we have a, do have a part here. It says, be sober and be vigilant because your adversary, the devil, walks around like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. So you're, the second part you have is resist him steadfast in the faith. So that's why you've got to keep the word. You have to keep the word of God in your mouth. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. It's so important that we keep that word in our mouth. It says, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. In other words, just admit to yourself you need God. And stop trying to fix it yourself. <laughs> Myself. Ever try to fix it yourself? Yeah. But a humble person, a humble person will just say, God, <laughs> this is too big for me. I really, really need you in this situation. So I come to you and lead me to the words, Father, and, and you just go in that Bible and, and you get the words and you resist the devil steadfast in the faith. You cannot resist the devil unless you're in faith. It's just plain and simple because if you're not in faith, you're not trusting God. And it takes all of that to resist the devil and to be in faith. And so we have to cast our cares upon him daily, daily. So, well, I did. I, I, I gave it to him yesterday. Well, you took it back, <laughs> and you need to give it to him today. Amen. And so it's important that you do that. And, of course, we, we know that in the book of Joshua, he says, God tells him, only be strong and very courageous. And the way he's to be strong and to be courageous is to take hold of that word and meditate day and night and night and day and day and night and night and day. <laughs> that sounds like every day, doesn't it? <laughs> Meditating on that word, speaking the word. Hallelujah. And so to get rid of that stinking thinking, there's something else we have to, we want to... Uh, cast our cares upon him, but now we need to cast down imaginations. Go to your Bible, 2 Corinthians 10, 5. Hallelujah. I'm going to start in verse 3, actually. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. How many people in here have flesh? <laughs> How many of you try to war within the flesh sometimes? For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments. How many of you have arguments going on in your head sometimes? <laughs> Woo, come on now. I'll tell you, like, I've been dealing with some of that just lately. And I said, God, you're so good. I needed this more than anybody else today, so y'all just relax. <laughs> yeah, you know, you, you always, we always say casting down imaginations and every high thing that it exalts itself above the knowledge of God. But this says casting down arguments. And I got to thinking, God, that's exactly what's been going on in my head. <laughs> over some situations that we're facing, and it's just like, like this little conversation boop, 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 between that other person. <laughs> we're arguing right here in my head. I said, Lord, did I need this this morning? <laughs> and I only found out this morning that I was preaching, so 
<laughs> you, think God, you think God has a sense of humor, huh? But I'm so glad, Daddy God, I needed this. Now I can make it through next week. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. The Word of God is so wonderful. So it says, casting down arguments or imaginations, whatever you want to call it, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. You got to go and <laughs> capture. You got to catch those things. Capture that. But you're not going to capture that with your own thinking. It's going to take words to pull down those imaginations, to stop the arguments. Because when you try to stop arguments in your head with thinking, it goes right back to what it was thinking. <laughs> so it's going to take words. It's going to take deliberation. It's going to take determination to put the word and get it out of your mouth over those situations. Amen. The word is living. It's powerful. It's going to do what God said it will do. So instead of lifting up and entertaining the thoughts that are in our heads that are not good and trying to fix it and solve it in here, <laughs> we need to pick up the word of God, put it in our mouth, and speak it, and then God will solve it. Amen. And it'll come out so much better, I promise you. <laughs> Hallelujah. And so we have to understand that there, there is war that goes on between your ears. <laughs> A lot. And I think more as the, as the time of Jesus drawing closer. I don't know about you, but it seems like there's always something. You know, used to there was every now and then you'd face a situation. But I don't know. It seems like day after day. <laughs> situation after situation and so we have to be so full of the word of God speaking it out of our mouth so that we can survive hallelujah in this place called the world <laughs> we're going to look at Hebrews 10 35 I hope this is helping somebody but like I said if it doesn't help one other person in here it is helping glory to God Oh, Jesus is wonderful. Hebrews 10, 35. So you want to cast your cares on the Lord. You want to cast down those imaginations and those silly little arguments that go on in your head. But you don't want to cast away your confidence. Amen. Hebrews 10, 35 says, Therefore do not cast away your confidence. Why? It has a great reward. <laughs> Meaning, something good's going to come out of it if you don't cast away your confidence. Amen. Verse 36 For you have need of endurance, so that after you have done the will of God, what is the will of God? Cast your cares upon Him, cast down the imaginations, and don't cast away your confidence then you can receive the promises of God. Simple message, not always so simple to do. <laughs> Hallelujah. It has a great reward. For you have need of endurance. You know that another word for endurance is patience. We have need of patience. How many in, in here need some patience? <laughs> Y'all are just, yeah, maybe... <laughs> Come on, y'all. Help me out here. How many of you could use some patience today? How many of you need some patience before you got here this morning? <laughs> we have need of patience. What is that patience anyway? It's that calm, quiet assurance. <laughs> calm quiet assurance yes God it is going to be okay <laughs> I'm giving it to you you're going to work it out and then leave it in his hands amen we all have need of patience so that we can receive the promises of God but you know the devil really wants to steal your identity you know there's a lot of identity identity theft. <laughs> Ooh, that's going to hard to say 
out in the world. But let me tell you, it's also in the spirit realm. The devil comes to steal your identity. So if you don't know who you are, what you have, what you can do in Christ, then, then he'll tell you who you are, what you're going to have, and what you can't do. <laughs> Amen. So you have, we have a, to understand that we are sons and daughters of God. A few weeks ago, pastor said, God just said, I am your daddy. Every daddy in here wants good for his children, I'm sure. There isn't any daddy in here when you have your child in a need that you wouldn't help that child. And so he's our daddy, and we're his sons and daughters. And he's called us to be lights in the world. Jesus is the light of the world, but he now says that you are the light of the world. So we're to be lights. We are to be reflecting the love of God. You are overcomers. You, look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, you are an overcomer. Now look at your other neighbor. Neighbor, <laughs> you are an overcomer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And you're victorious. And you know, the Word of God says, He always leads us in triumph. He's always leading. We have to be following. Sometimes He's leading us to victory, trying to lead us to victory. We're going in the opposite direction. Amen? He said He always leads us in triumph. If we follow His lead, we're going to walk victorious. We're going to come through that situation you're going through. God's going to take care of it. But we have to be willing to follow him. Hallelujah. And so we're, so, we're sons and daughters, but we're also co-heirs. We have a great inheritance. Amen. Says he's given us every spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Every spiritual blessing. Everything. He's given us all things that pertain to life and to godliness. And so we can live and we can walk holy. As he is holy, a lot of the Christian world is not walking holy as he is holy. They're making all kinds of excuses for why they live the way they live and thinking they can get, get away with it. But the Bible says, be holy as he is holy. It means we have to live separated. We don't, li we don't do what everybody else does. We have, our lives have to be different. We have to be an example, and we have to come together as the body of Christ. Amen? And so we are in Christ. We are his children. We are heirs. And what do we have because we are in Christ? We have authority. We have authority over serpents, scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy. And we have to get that understanding on the inside of us. We have more power. We have strong power over the devil, our adversary. But we have to understand that we have that, and we have to use authority, take our authority in his name. Hallelujah. We have the spirit of love and power living on the inside of us. <laughs> A lot of questions today. <laughs> How many of you have somebody... You need to love right now. That's not so lovable. Yes, we all could. Yes. Love someone unlovable. And yet, the spirit of love is living on the inside of us. What's wrong with us? We're Christians. It says the love of God has been shed abroad in our heart. My heart's a bit higher than that. By the Holy Spirit, God's love is in us. But sometimes it sure is tough to love the unlovely. We need his strength. We need the Holy Spirit. He's our helper. He's going to help us be holy. He's going to help us love. Amen. And my goodness, he'll keep your mind sound. <laughs> Sound mind. Anybody needs a sound mind? 
Thank you for your honesty. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But the good thing about the Holy Spirit is if we will stay filled with the Holy Ghost, be being filled with the Holy Ghost, how do we do that? Praise, worship. Get a song in your heart unto the Lord. Get that song going. And so I, I've been, I have been really having to work hard at that <laughs> this past week. You know, you see, you got those little arguments going in here? Go to sing in the praises of God. Go to sing in the praises of God. And sing the praises out loud and praise and praise. And it will cast those, those things down. You will never cast all those imaginations down by thinking. You can't even think your praises. You got to praise with your mouth. That's what praise is coming out of your mouth loud and clear. And so you have to know who you are in Christ, um, what you have, and what you can do. And we sang that this morning. Nothing is impossible with God. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can. And you can too. <laughs> do all things through Christ. Not on your own, but through Christ. Through the living word and the Holy Spirit. Christ is the anointed word and his anointing or the spirit of God. It takes the word of God and the spirit of God. Hallelujah. You are not alone. Christ in you is the hope of glory. Is the hope of good things happening in your life. Hallelujah. We have to stay close to the Lord. And we have to keep our hope up in him. You know, sometimes people tell you, don't get your hopes up. I'm telling you, get your hopes up. <laughs> get your hopes up. Christ in you is the hope. Get, be full of the word. Be full of Christ. Get the hope in you up so that whatever you're going through, you say, God, I'm putting it in your hands. I'm casting those cares upon you. I'm going to cast down those things that keep trying to tell me this, that, and the other. I'm going to not cast away my confidence. I'm going to take you at your word, and I'm going to sing the praises of God, give you glory, honor, and you will see things will change. And um, it's just so very important. You can't ever get away from praising God and spending that time with him. Amen. So, simple message, not a long message, but if you will do what has been spoken today, it will take you a long way. Amen? Amen. Father, we thank you today. Go ahead and get the singers to come back up to do uh, Amazing Grace. Lord, we thank you today that your word is living. It is powerful. It is our happy place. Hallelujah. If ever you find yourself un in an unhappy state, move to the state of the Word of God. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. And so, as they sing this song today, just if, if you've got something going on in your life, which I would venture to say the majority of people do, and you want to just take a step of faith, and you just want to come praise him right now and just, just declare about his amazing grace, how truly he is good. He has good things for us. He's already paid the price, amen? And he's already wants you to walk in that victory. It's available to you today. It's a simple, simple step of faith to come forward on this piece of carpet right here. And praise God and just receive from him today what you need in whatever situations you're going through. Amen. <laughs>